Hello, welcome to the world of literature. At world of literature today, we will be dealing with the term, the theater of the absurd. The theater of the absurd uh, was a movement, a literary movement, which in itself is considered as an anti-literary movement that flourished uh, somewhere between 1950 uh, up to 1989. Now, uh, the theater of the absurd are uh, what we also know as absurd drama, absurd plays, which were written under the term uh, called as theater of absurd, had its beginning uh, with an essay which was published by Albert Camus and he titled that as The Myth of Sisyphus. It was in that particular essay that the term absurd was for the first time used uh, for the absurdity of life on earth. This movement, that is the theater of absurd, was a movement in response to the existing conventional uh, literary movements that uh, had been there in human society since the times of Aristotle or Plato. Most of the plays or novels or poetry or literature that was written up to this point of time followed a particular convention. But after the Second World War, after the end of Second World War, we had a strange, a different sort of movement known as the Theater of Absurd. And the absurdity in writing arose uh, from uh, absurdity or from meaninglessness or a state of hopelessness that engulfed the world in post-World War era. In the myth of Sisyphus, the essay written by, by Albert Camus, he talks about the life on this earth is uh, full of confusion, is uh, full of tensions, is full of ambiguity that uh, there is no clearness, no, no clarity in actions that human beings perform on the earth or the way they live life on the earth. They have got no particular purpose. And he says at one point in the essay that when one has lost all the hope in the life, then there mustn't be anything wrong in accepting the suicide because that is the only thing that is uh, uh, the only solution that is left with the human beings to overcome the absurdity of life. Albert Camus, uh, while using this absurdity, are uh, uh, using absurdity for life in his essay, The Myth of Sisyphus, writes that in a universe that is suddenly deprived of illusions and of light. Man feels a stranger. He is an irremediable exile because he is deprived of memories of a lost homeland as much as he lacks the hope of a promised land to come. This divorce between man and his life, the actor and his setting, truly constitutes the feeling of absurdity. This now this definition of uh, this argument of Albert Campbell regarding the life, the loss of life and the hopelessness of regaining that state in life which was uh, you know, usually uh, uh, what we read in Bible, we read in mythology, we read in Quran about the life that we gave up, uh, that would be the first, the fall of Adam and all those things and he's, he's referring that scenario to the fall of Adam. And that fall of Adam led us to an exile on this earth and now we do not know what is to come. Now when we have so much of confusion, there is absurdity in life. And when there is absurdity in the existence of the human life, then there must be absurdity in the literature that we write. Another thing that uh, contributed to the development of this absurd movement post 1950s was World War II. World War II had left the whole universe bereft of hope. And there was another thing, the war was over, but the danger of 
the nuclear war, the danger of nuclear weapons left people more diligent and left them more confused. So that was another reason that gave impetus to the theater of Absol. Eugene Ionesco, an other significant playwright critic who writes Now, after this philosophy of absurd or this absurd philosophy had developed in Europe under the influence of uh, uh, Albert Camus and even Eugene Ionesco, later it was in 1960s that the term the theater of the absurd was for the first time used by Martin Aslin in one of his essays which was later published in the form of a book, uh, so a book of more than 400 odd pages in which he discusses at length about waiting for Bodo and the first successful staging of the play uh, in front of some convicts in a prison and he, he details that and it was from there that we got the term theatre of the episode. Now, uh, the important or significant works and writers who which which actually represented the theater as absurd are John Jenny's work The Maids, which was published in 1947, Eugene Ionesco's uh, work The Ball Soprano, which was published in 1950s, Arthur Adamo's work Ping Pong, which was published in 1955, and Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Bodo, published in 1953. These works represent the theater of absurd movement, and the play Waiting for Bodo became the most significant work written by Samuel Beckett uh, under the category of theater of absurd.